Many years ago, a great pirate captain named Wunin was said to have plundered a third of all the gold in the world. Though his time eventually came to an end, his legend did not, and pirates around the world continued to pursue the map leading to his fabled horde. In time, this map was captured by the brutal El Dorago, who immediately set sail for the so-called Isle of Gold. Elsewhere on the sea, the Straw Hat Pirates, Luffy, Zoro, Nami, and Usopp find themselves once again starving, Luffy having squandered the month's provisions. Their troubles are soon compounded by a troop of burglars under El Dorago's command, who quietly raid the Goan Mary for all his valuables. While initially grateful to the burglars for paying him in rice balls, Luffy quickly retaliates when they try to shoot him. In the process, he finds the burglar's own boat being helmed by a small boy named Tobio. Moments later, El Dorago himself arrives and unleashes his devil fruit powers, condensing a simple scream into a beam of pure destruction that splinters the burglar's boat and capsizes the Mary. While Nami and Usopp are swept away, Zoro dives into the sea and manages to save Luffy and Tobio. As they settle themselves on a piece of driftwood, Tobio tries to explain his own ambitions for the Isle of Gold, but is ignored by Luffy and Zoro, who begin rowing after the sudden smell of food. The smell leads the trio to a floating Odin shop, the home and proprietary of Tobio's grandfather Gonzo, who has devoted his life to cooking and serving the stew. Tobio, who scorns these humble goals and idolizes Wunin, constantly runs away from this shop in hopes of joining Wunin's crew. Though somewhat interested in Wunin's legend, Luffy and Zoro mostly focus on gorging themselves, until Gonzo demands payment. When neither Straw Hat can offer a single coin, they are promptly chained together as punishment. Meanwhile, El Dorago and his crew reach the Isle of Gold, unaware that Nami has managed to stow away on their ship. In contrast, you saw Piss, along with the Mary, quickly captured, on pain of death from El Dorago's Lieutenant Gallus, he rashly offers to decipher Wunin's map. Under Usopp's guidance, the group finds a valley holding a massive castle, where Nami intercepts, and, with Usopp's help, tries to stall them by claiming the gold is buried several days deep. This backfires, however, as El Dorago simply begins using his powers to level the area. The impact of El Dorago's beams quickly draws the steel-chained Luffy and Zoro, as well as Tobio, who swears to protect Wunin's treasure by himself. Amused, El Dorago easily overpowers Tobio, Luffy, and Zoro prove more formidable, but remain hobbled by their chains, with only Zoro's mouth free to wield his swords. Eventually, Luffy makes a misstep that rockets the two of them, and Tobio, off to a distant hill. While El Dorago and his crew look on in confusion, Nami and Usopp quietly slip away as well. As the four straw hats regroup on the hill, Nami picks the lock on Luffy and Zoro's chains, and reveals that she has stolen Wunin's map as well. She then tries to scorch the map for hidden messages, only for it to burn to a cinder. Nevertheless, Usopp remembers a pivotal and initially misinterpreted clue from the map that leads them to the island's most prominent feature, a long, steep plateau. Despite concerns from the straw hats, Tobio insists on following to prove himself worthy of wounding, together, they scale half the plateau before finding a cave to rest inside. To their shock, they find Gonzo resting in this cave as well. Dolefully, Gonzo admits that Wunin had been his childhood friend, one who constantly scorned their humble village life, especially Gonzo's Odin, and yearned for gold and glory. To this, Gonzo had retorted, gold doesn't laugh, doesn't sing, doesn't drink, doesn't cry, is no different from a rock. These quarrels came to a head when Wunin resolved to be a pirate, furnished a flag, and held a clifftop pack for Ganzo's loyalty. When Gonzo refused, they began brawling and ultimately tumbled over the cliff. Though Wunin managed to catch his flag on a stray branch, Gonzo realized it was not strong enough to support them both and let go so Wunin could save himself. Miraculously, he survived the resulting fall, but in the time he took to recover, Wunin left the village never to return. In the years since, Wunin fulfilled his dreams, 
becoming a pirate of unimaginable wealth. Meanwhile, Gonzo realized his own dream of a traveling Odin shop, allowing him to defeat people around the world. Now, having found the Isle of Gold, he has prepared his most heartfelt pot of Odin, seeking only to share it with an older, wiser woman. Touched by this story, the Straw Hats and Tobio help Gonzo to the top of the plateau, where they find a lonely hut concealing an underground tunnel. Before they can enter, however, they are attacked by El Dorago and his men, who had worked out the same reasoning as Usopp. As Gonzo tries to shield his grandson, he is struck down by El Dorago, who mockingly spills and stomps on his Odin, only to be punched aside by Luffy, who defiantly scoops up the stew and eats it with compliments. As Gonzo and Tobio look on in wonder, the Straw Hats begin their counterattack, Zoro defeating Gallus in a swift duel, while Luffy unleashes a hail of blows that eventually shatter El Dorago's prized golden armor. Enraged, El Dorago unleashes one more beam, only for Luffy to bounce it back with his rubber body, and subsequently hurl El Dorago off the island with the Gomu Gomu no Bazooka. This instantly terrifies the rest of El Dorago's men, who gather the fallen Gallus and flee. Victorious, the Straw Hats take a grateful Gonzo and Tobio back to Wunan's tunnel, which they follow to an underground chamber. Inside, they find a dusty skeleton in half rotted captain's regalia, all that remains of Wounded. As Tobio collapses in tears, the Straw Hats notice writing on the chamber walls and recognize it as Wounded's deathbed letter. In the letter, Wounded confesses that in his old age, he came to realize how unfulfilling gold in itself truly was. What his childhood self had longed for was the journey, the adventure to winning it. With a lifetime of such adventures behind him, he surrendered all his gold to his rightful owners, keeping only one memento for himself, the torn flag that marked the last day he ever shared with Gonzo. It was this flag that buoyed his spirit throughout all his voyages, as a reminder of the one man he truly respected. Overwhelmed by what his grandfather meant to wound it, Tobio tearfully apologizes for all his scorn. In turn, Gonzo reaffirms his love for his grandson and proclaims he will be proud of whatever dream Tobio chooses to pursue. Together, they resolve to give Wunan a proper burial, but not before seeing the straw hats off. Above ground, having compensated their journey by looting El Dorago's ship, the straw hats offer to pay for Ganzo's Odin, only to be refused. Rather, Gonzo declares their debt a promise to reunite once they have fulfilled their own dreams, a promise the Straw Hats heartily accept as they cast off for their next adventure.